Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with Part 11 of Fundamental Laws, a report of the 68th Convocation of the Rose Cross Order. The Second Coming of Christ The law of evolution is a reality. Nowhere is it more evidenced than in man. But man must comply with this law, which is the law of growth in order for him to experience the operation of the law of evolution in his life. In other words, in order for us to manifest the law of growth, we have to comply with divine law and live in accordance with its rules. We have to assume an active, positive, and cooperative attitude towards the law and not remain passive or indifferent to it. Passivity is stagnation and not growth. Growth implies activity and change. A close study of mankind, its various peoples and races, the savage, the semi-civilized and civilized, discloses to us the operation of this law of evolution. And by it also we account for the differences between individuals. Some have more heart and more intelligence than others and, in consequence, are further advanced on the evolutionary path than others. Of the white race today, there are those who, in the unfoldment and growth, have far outstripped the rest of mankind. These are the thinkers and leaders who mold human thought and give direction to civilization. In the study of man, we perceive that the law of evolution is operative principally on his spiritual side. The more highly evolved the man, the more spiritual he is, or the more soul or goodness he displays. As soul in man is his highest plane and the connecting link between him and God, the more soul he has, the near God man is, and the more godly a man is, the more of soul he is. In the vanguard of the human race, there are those individuals, only a few, who have far outstripped the rest in development of their souls, beyond the imagination of the average man. As the difference between an Edison and a savage is immensely great, so the difference between an average man of today and an evolved master soul of Christ is still greater and beyond the common conception. If we admit that the race has evolved spiritually, from the savage to the civilized state, if we admit that the race today manifests more of heart, goodness, justice, and mercy, we must admit the truth that if the race has evolved thus far, it is capable of evolving still further. And when we accept this proposition, we must accept the statement that there are those individuals who through living a life in conformity with divine law and who, through training and soul development, have so much advanced in the involvement of their souls that, to the average man, they indeed have become superhuman, angelic beings, master souls, Christ and gods. As the race is evolving towards God, naturally these highly developed men stand nearest to God. From time immemorial, there has been an organization of those highly developed souls, banded together for one common purpose, to teach mankind divine law, to show mankind how to live their lives in conformity with divine law, so as to hasten their evolution towards Godhood, to warn them against false teachings, to originate movements trending to improve conditions, and to train men to lead the race into the paths of righteousness. This organization or fraternity has existed in all ages under different names and exists today under the true Rosicrucian title. It trains men to become master men, master souls, Christ and messiahs. It has always guarded the pure teachings of the masters from profanation. It has never taught openly for it recognizes that the race is not as yet prepared for its sublime inner mysteries. Its esoteric teachings are only for the few of the race who have evolved to the point where orthodoxy, creeds, and ritualism no longer satisfies, whose movements are pure and whose desires are holy, and who hunger for a meteor spiritual diet. It has ever kept its sacred teachings of its master, uncorrupted and beyond the profane, the vicious and the ignorant, today as never before, in a spiritually more enlightened age, the true Rosicrucian fraternity offers its sublime teaching to the worthy and the true student. 
From this great fraternity of souls have been sent trained master souls, great messiahs, and Christ to lead the people back into paths of righteousness. When the people had wandered away from truth, when a time arises when the people through false teachings have drifted away from divine law and have sunk into misery and degradation, and when it becomes imperative to point out to them the true path, these great leaders come to teach divine law and how to apply the law so as to evolve oneself to Christhood. Every age and every people have had a great messiah or Christ or savior sent by the great fraternity. The Chinese had their Confucius, the Scandinavians Balder, the Egyptians Osiris, the Greeks Hercules, Bacchus, Apollo and Hermes, the Indians Krishna, the Persians Mithran Zoroaster, the Hindus Buddha, and the Jews Moses, the prophets and Jesus. These great teachers, having been instructed by the same fraternity, taught the people the same mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. A close study of all the great religions will disclose to the earnest student that the basic principles are the same in all, since their origin is the same. During the life of these masters, only a few of the people, disciples and students, understood their teachings, but the great mass of people never wholly accepted the teachings. After the masters passed away, as their teaching spread, designing an ignorant priest substituted the word for the spirit, creed and dogmas in place of divine truth, and so corrupted the true teachings that the mysteries of soul building were lost to the people. As in the past, so today, the churches have lost the grand science of soul building and can only offer blind belief, creed and dogma. The teachings of the Masters, or Christ, concerns itself with the science of soul building, but ignorant and selfish priestcraft of every age, having lost this grand science and desiring to control the people, have substituted a worship of form and ceremony and idols instead of teaching the people divine law. They have set up these great teachers, or Christ, as gods for the people to worship, so that the Chinese worship Confucius, the Jews Moses, the Egyptians worshipped Osiris, the Persians Zoroaster, the Greeks Apollo and Hermes, and the Christians worshipped Jesus. Today, after 2,000 years of the last great teacher or Christ, we meet with conditions if not more serious that at any time in the past are at least as bad as any history records. We have vast, fertile acreage, yet the people are landless. We raise more food than we can consume, yet large numbers of people are hungry. We have an overproduction of wearing apparel, yet many of the people go naked. Never in the world's history was education so easy of access, and our libraries so full of books. Yet the mass of people are ignorant. Courts dispense injustice instead of justice. We have self-seeking and corrupt politicians instead of wise and just statesmen and counselors. Religion is not a matter of science and philosophy with the people. It has become a blind faith in creed and dogma. The priestcraft, having lost the spirit of the true teachings of the master, have become ignorant of divine law and not knowing how to teach the people the science and philosophy of soul building, and observing that their grip on the people is loosening, are attempting to revive and gain back their authority through friends emotionalism called revivals. Poverty, misery, disease, and early death stalk the streets. Society is miserable, sickly, and unhappy. Surely, no apologist can be found who is so dull as not to admit the utter failure of our present civilization. Instead of considering the Master Jesus as a leader come to teach the science of soul building, the people worship him as a god, and by deifying the Master, they place his life and his teachings beyond them, for they reason with themselves, who can be like him, he being a god or born of god. The great teachers or Christ never claimed anything for themselves, but that their mission was to teach the people the way, the truth, and the life of the initiatory path, leading to the development and immortality of soul. 
through living of a life in conformity with divine law and training in soul building. These Christ were trained leaders who were born in the flesh like you and I and who through development and training only in accordance with the teachings of the great Rosicrucian fraternity had developed their soul and attained supreme illumination or Christhood. Christhood was earned by them and so can you earn it if you will live the life that they did. What is Christ? Christ is the illumined or developed soul. Every man has the potential Christ in embryotic form, which through training can be developed into an illumined soul or Christ. And this training is offered today by the great fraternity of masters, so that when we speak of Christ or Messiah or Savior, we mean those great teachers of mankind who attain their position only through training in soul science. And their mission among mankind was to teach this glorious science and philosophy of soul building and by their exemplary life be a model to the people. The difference between the average man and a Christ is in soul development. The average man pays no attention to his divine possibilities while the Christ through a life of training under master teachers has unfolded his soul and made himself a divine being. The fraternity of masters or illumined souls has always existed and exists today. They are ever ready to point out the way, the truth, and the life, but they cannot force their teachings on an unwilling public, nor do they desire to court death at the hands of ignorant mobs. Seek and ye shall find, ask and it shall be given you. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. The individual must of his own free will and accord seek soul development and wisdom, and a way is found whereby the earnest seeker will meet the true teacher. Jesus said, Think not I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. The divine laws were given to the people by Moses, as by all other messiahs to all people in every age. But after Moses passed away, the people turned their backs on divine law and drifted back into materialism. When Jesus came, no one among the people, including the priesthood, understood divine law and the science of soul development. The mission of Jesus then was to fulfill the law and the teachings of the prophets, for he was in harmony with them, and by his exemplary life to show them the way, the truth, and the life or how to unfold their souls and reach supreme illumination or Christhood. The question arises, can a Messiah or Christ change the mass of the people? History proves this has not been done. For consider the great many of teachers who have appeared before the people to bring them out of darkness into light. What have they accomplished with the mass? The people in the present as in the past, still worship form. They still cling to creeds and ceremonialism. If in the past they worshiped the golden bull, they worship today the golden calf. They still think that they can gain salvation in heaven through mere blind belief only in the divinity of one man, forgetting that the way, the truth, and the life is not based on belief alone, but on soul development and training. Common sense leads us to see that no Messiah, not even God himself, has the power to change the people from one state into another. God having endowed man with free will and free choice and having constituted him a free moral agent, it would be a contravention of his own laws were he to compel mankind to mend its ways. Man must of his own free will and accord square his actions by the square of virtue and thereby gradually grow into divinity. If God has not been able these many thousands of years to turn the people from their erring ways, how can anyone who is less than God do that which God has failed to do? And to claim that a Christ can transplant the people bodily into heaven, whether deserving or not, is to place a Christ on a higher plane than God and to stamp God as a failure. But God is not a failure. He desires his offspring to come to him of their own accord in due time and season. And coming to God is a matter of growth and solar evolvement and training in soul science, and not a matter of compulsion or overnight conversion. God is soul, 
and to know God, one must become solely developed, which is a matter of years of training in soul science under a master teacher. How foolish it is for the people to still think that they can be converted and become regenerated through blind faith alone. The race today still thinks that when a Christ will come, he will lead them direct to heaven and save them from their sufferings and forgive them their sins and give them plenty and bestow upon them growth without their working for it, if they will believe in his divinity. It is a fantastic dream. This idea of waiting for Christ to relieve mankind of the responsibility of paying for its sins and of working for its growth. If we subscribe to the golden rule, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. And if mankind has sown plentifully of sin, who would do the reaping? Can God set aside his own laws? If God is all law, how can he set us an example of law breaking? Mankind must pay the penalty for transgression of divine law and no one can stand between us and divine law. All that these Christs can do for us is to teach us the initiatory path of soul development and how to gain immortality of soul, now and here. But they cannot live this life for us nor pay our debts, nor grow for us, just as much as no one can eat or drink or sleep for us. The masters never taught that the messiahs through their sacrifice would bring salvation to mankind. This pernicious doctrine has been given to the world by a designing priesthood for selfish reasons and has been acquiesced to by the people who are only too glad to believe in doctrines which will promise them most at the expenditure of least effort. Man is lazy and he likes to believe in teachings which best suit his lazy notions and which do not require from him effort. Set up a system of thought whereby one can be absolved from reaping what one has sown by mere blind belief and you will have hordes that will follow you. But teach the people individual responsibility and they will stone you. No one, no matter how godly he may be, can live the life for others or relieve them of their burdens or bring them salvation. If the people had the right kind of manhood and felt a man's responsibility to their God, their neighbor, or themselves, they would not expect anyone else to pay their debts or the master's death to save them from just punishment. Yet millions of mankind today, as in the past, are waiting for some Messiah or Christ to come down from heaven, to lead his godly life and to die for them, so that they, without doing anything worthwhile for themselves, can reap health, happiness, growth and immortality of soul, and be transplanted into some far off place called heaven. The law of God is individual responsibility, every man must first rise to that plane of intelligence where he feels his individual responsibility for his thoughts and actions. And when he arrives at this stage of his evolution, he no longer sits idly by waiting for some Christ to drop down from heaven to relieve him from his burdens, forgive him his sins, and make an angel of him. All these messianic expectations arise from the erroneous teachings given to the people by ignorant priesthood, who, having lost the science of soul development, teach the people that these messiahs are gods, and that if they, the people, believe thus, they will be saved and absolved from past errors. What a frightful thought to hold and how blasphemous it is of God. Let us understand clearly the meaning of Messiah or Christ. Christ is not a man. Christ or Messiah is the development or illumined soul in a man. All the great masters and teachers of the human race, Moses, Buddha, and Jesus, were born in the flesh, like you and I, and who through training and soul science as taught by the great Rosicrucian fraternity today, as it has done in the past, had become the Christ or illumined souls. But every man has the same opportunities and the same possibilities of becoming Christ. If only one offspring of God could become Christ and it were denied the rest of the race, and if the race were denied solar development and were doomed to death and extinction, then it were better for the race not to have been born at all. 
but the great teachers never taught that they were the only begotten sons of God. On the contrary, they pointed out the path of attainment and Christhood for all who were willing to overcome and work for immortality. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth unto me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus did not mean blind belief, active faith supported by works. His disciples were, were earnest students of soul science, builders of their spiritual temples, who lived their lives in conformity with divine law and who were in training under him. They were not mere blind followers, and he promised them that they would do greater works than he was doing. If it were possible for his disciples to do the works that he was doing, why is it not possible for others to do likewise? Do you think that the science of soul building as taught by Jesus and the other masters of old has been lost? It has been lost to the people who have never accepted these teachings, but they have not been lost to the few earnest students in every age who have always kept the pure Christic teachings alive. Jesus said plainly, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For Behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Each individual is a Christ in the making. Christ is soul. Each man has the germ or Christ child within him. It is his Messiah or Savior, which through training under a master teacher will make of him a master man with Christic powers. It is for each man to bring forth and unfold his Savior and no man can do it for him, just as no one can eat for him, and the kingdom of heaven is within each individual. It is for him to find. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. No one ever attained his Christhood by waiting for some other Christ to do his work, just as no one ever became a ball player by watching some other ball player play. Two thousand years ago, Jesus came to teach the people's soul development. He attained his illumination of soul, or became the Christ. It is now up to the people to accept his teachings in spirit, to become students of soul science, and when the people travel the path of initiation of soul development, they will have become the Christ, and then does the Christ come to them a second time. Do not wait for some external Christ to come. The Savior or Christ is within you, and it is ever ready to become manifest in your lives when you are ready to take up the training of soul development. But remember that belief in immortality of soul is not sufficient to make of you immortal. The great fraternity of masters want students who are willing to work. They do not care for mere followers who are satisfied with faith alone. The great masters are ever ready to help the earnest student who is desirous of unfolding his soul and become a Christ. And today, through soul science, we are offering these teachings in all their purity and simplicity. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. How many of you realize that your soul is urging you for its unfoldment? How many of you hear its voice and are willing to open the door to the Christ within yourselves? Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. Please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.